Well, it will be useful if you have one of those passages that we read earlier in our service open in front of you. John chapter 11. John and chapter 11. So today is Easter Sunday, 2022. And on Easter Sunday, Christians remember the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the tomb. But this morning, I want to take you back. I want to take you back to an earlier episode in the life of Jesus when one of his dear friends, a man named Lazarus, was died and buried for four days. And specifically... <coughs> I want us to focus on what Jesus said to the sister of Lazarus, one of his sisters, to a woman named Martha. And so we're going to look at verse 25 and verse 26 of John chapter 11 this morning. Let me just remind you of what Jesus said to Martha in verse 25 and verse 26. In verse 25 and verse 26, he told her this. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? So that's going to be our text this morning. That's what we're going to look at this morning. And so the title for this Easter Sunday morning sermon is your only hope is in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Your only hope is in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because one day all of us are going to be in the same position as Lazarus. One day we will all die. One day we'll all be laid to rest. But the question is, what lies beyond that? What hope will we have of eternal life in heaven beyond the grave? Now, here in the verses we're looking at this morning, verse 25 and verse 26 of John chapter 11, we're being told our only hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ and his resurrection. And so as we examine this hope that is set before us, this joyful, good hope. I want to do so under three very simple headings this morning. First of all, our hope is in Jesus. In Jesus. And then secondly, it is through faith. It's through faith. And thirdly, it is for anyone. It is for anyone. It is in Jesus. It is through faith. And it is for anyone. First of all, then, as we look at this part of the Bible this morning, we see that it's in Jesus. Our hope is in Jesus. Just look at the opening words of verse 25 with me. Let's just read the opening words of verse 25. And in the opening words of verse 25, we're told that Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Now, this is Jesus that is speaking to her. This is the Son of God who is saying these words. This is the Savior talking. And his name, Jesus, it literally means the Lord saves. That's what the meaning of the name Jesus is. And that is exactly right. That is exactly the right name for him. In fact, when Jesus was just a baby in Mary's womb, Joseph was told by an angel of the Lord that he must name this child Jesus. And he was given the reason because he will save his people from their sins. That is why Jesus came to save his people from their sins. And it is this man that now speaks to Martha. But not only is Jesus the savior of his people. But he's also Martha's friend. He's known Martha for a long time. And he's known Lazarus. And he's known Lazarus's other sister, Mary. And so as he speaks to Martha, 
He speaks to her with care and with tenderness and with concern for her. He can see her grief. Her dear brother has been dead in the grave these four days. And there is a bond that exists between Jesus and Martha. Jesus has been in her home many times. She has cooked for him. She's listened to the things that Jesus has taught. These two are no strangers. Yes, Jesus is the Savior, the Son of God, but he's also <coughs> her friend. And at this great moment of grief and distress, as Martha is mourning the loss of her brother, Jesus comes to her and he speaks to her. He doesn't stand off and remain distant and silent. He doesn't keep quiet. No, he goes to be with her and he speaks to her in tenderness and love and concern. And, you know, Jesus still does speak to people today. Um, you don't hear the audible voice of Jesus, but you read his words in the Bible. The Bible's full of the words of Jesus. And there is still the same tenderness and the same care and the same compassion and the same desire to want to speak to those who will listen to him. He still speaks with the same warmth, the same affection to anyone that will read, anyone that will listen. And this then is what Jesus says to his friend Martha. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Now what does Jesus mean by that? What is he saying when he says those words? Well, whatever he is saying, he's clearly talking about himself. Because he starts by saying, I am. I am. The comfort that is to be found in Jesus has to start with Jesus. You see, Jesus is not speaking about some sort of abstract concept or some philosophical proposition or an ideological framework. Look, Martha, what you need to understand is this, this and this. No, Jesus does not speak about any of those things. He doesn't say, Martha, what you need is you need to go through a few religious ceremonies. You need to go to the temple and go through this ritual. No, none of that. He speaks about himself. He says, Martha, I am. He speaks about who he is. He speaks about his own person. You see, whatever Jesus is about to say to Martha, it is inextricably linked to himself. You cannot separate what Jesus is about to say from who he is. Jesus says, I am. And then Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. In other words, look, Martha, I'm the one who can bring life from death. In other words, in Jesus Christ, there is restoration and regeneration and revitalization. And we're not just speaking metaphorically here. Jesus is not using spiritual symbolic language. When he says, I am the resurrection, he really means there is life beyond the grave. There is life from death in him. And Jesus not only says that he is the resurrection, but he says, I am the resurrection and the life. And the life. In other words, it is only those who are in Jesus that truly can taste life as it's meant to be tasted. It is only... In Jesus that anyone can know the giver of life and the sustainer of life and the source of all life. It is only in Jesus that anyone can know eternal spiritual life. And it's got to be in him. Your hope has to be in him. And all of your trust has to be in him. And your life has got to be in him. It's not enough just to know about him. It's not enough just to be vaguely aware of him. It's not enough just to come to church on Easter Sunday morning once a year and maybe dip in at Christmas again. Giving to charity won't do it. Good works won't do it. And being outwardly religious won't do it. No, you've got to be in Jesus. That's our only hope. And the hope of the resurrection, the hope of life beyond death, 
It's not to be found then in any set of abstract ideas or philosophies. No, it is found in a person. We hope in a person. Our hope is in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. And so to those of you who have been Christians for many years, for those of you who have lived through umpteen Easter Sunday mornings and you've thought about the resurrection year after year after year, let me remind you of this fact. Your hope is in Jesus. It's not in all your years of church attendance. It's not in all the Bible knowledge that you've accumulated over the decades. It's not in your life of prayer. It's not in all your years of service to the church. Important and valuable though all those things are. But ultimately your hope is in Jesus. It's in Jesus. It always has been. And it always will be. And to those of you here in the congregation who may not call yourself a Christian this morning, let me say this. If you have any hope at all of resurrection beyond the grave, of your own resurrection, of your own life beyond death, any hope at all, it's got to be in Jesus. Because if your hope isn't grounded in Jesus, you have no hope at all. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you from these verses this morning. Our hope is in Jesus. But secondly, our hope is through faith. It's in Jesus, but it is through faith. Look at what Jesus says next. Just look at what Jesus says next in the rest of verse 25. Just read the rest of verse 25 with me and in the rest of verse 25 Jesus says whoever believes in me though he die yet shall he live in other words Jesus says look your hope is in me but you can only access this hope of the resurrection by believing in me by trusting in me by having faith in me that is what Jesus says to Martha you have to believe in Jesus. No, it's not enough just to know about him. Not enough just to know the things that Jesus did or the things that Jesus said. Or to know the things that Jesus taught. No, you've got to believe in him. Believe in his life, in his teaching, in his ministry, in his death and his resurrection. There's got to be a step of faith. You've got to entrust yourself to him completely you can't let anything remain you can't hold anything back in John chapter 3 verse 16 perhaps one of the best known verses of the Bible in all the world we're told that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but will have eternal life but you've got to believe in him or Romans chapter 10 verse 9 because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved but you see what Paul is saying you've got to believe it in your heart it can't just be superficial you can't just be religious on the outside you've got to believe it in your heart or Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God. It is not the result of any good works. So that none of you can boast. It is through faith. It's through faith. And this is the consistent teaching of the Bible. Salvation is by faith in Jesus Christ. There is no hope of eternal life by doing works of charity. It doesn't matter how many marathons you run for the British Heart Foundation. It doesn't matter how many food banks you support. 
It doesn't matter how many times you volunteer at homeless shelters. These things are good to do in and of themselves. But you can't obtain a hope of your resurrection through those things. It's got to be through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And nor will you find any hope in the modern phenomenon of virtue signaling. No matter how many politically correct causes you post on your social media feeds, no matter how many times you visit the recycling center, no matter how often you change your vocabulary to suit the latest trend, no ultimate hope is ever found in any of that. There's no resurrection in that. There's no redemption in any of that. Your hope has to be through faith in Jesus Christ. It has to be faith in his word. Through faith in his promises, through faith in his life, through faith in his death, through faith in his resurrection, through faith in his present reign, through faith in his future return, through faith in his kingdom. Jesus said, believe in me. Believe in me. And for those who do, for those who will put their faith in him, look at what Jesus says. Just look at what he says at the end of verse 25. At the end of verse 25, Jesus says, Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. There is life from death for those who have faith in Jesus Christ. And yes, we will pass through the darkness of death. We will experience death in this world. But there is the light of life on the other side. There is a hymn in our hymn book which says this. It says the sands of time are sinking and the dawn of heaven breaks. The summer morn I've sighed for, the fair sweet morn awakes. Dark, dark has been the midnight, but day spring is at hand and glory, glory dwelleth in Emmanuel's land. Speaking about the passage of death. But the wonderful light that's on the other side. But you can only have that through faith. You've got to believe in it. You've got to trust in it. You've got to commit yourself to it. And you cannot be half-hearted about it. You can't just sit on the fence. You can't have a foot in both camps and think, well, maybe the Bible's right. Maybe a part of me will believe in it. And a part of me will have a foot in this world and will... I'll, I'll pursue the things of this world. You can't do it like that. You've got to be all in. Jesus says here to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And so I'm asking you this morning, do you trust in the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you have faith in him? There is no hope for your resurrection unless it is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Your only hope is through faith. So then, this Easter Sunday morning, we're looking at these words of Jesus to his dear friend Martha. Recorded for us in John's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 25 and verse 26. And these verses are telling us. Our only hope is in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And our only hope, first of all, then, is in Christ. Secondly, it is through faith. And now thirdly and finally, this hope is for anyone. It's for anyone. Look at what Jesus says in verse 26. Just read verse 26 with me. And in verse 26, Jesus says, And everyone... Who lives and believes in me shall never die. In other words, every person who believes will have eternal life. Every man who believes, every woman who believes, and every child who believes will have this sure, certain hope of the resurrection that is to come. And it does not matter how young you are. Some of you here in church this morning are very, very young. But if you have faith, then 
you can be sure of eternal life. It doesn't matter how rich you are or how poor you are. It doesn't matter how religious you might be on the outside or how secular you are. You might have spent your whole life thinking Jesus is a myth and the gospel is no more than just a fantasy dreamed up by a bygone age. But as you read through the New Testament, it's clear all manner of people from all manner of backgrounds have come to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone who does believe is saved. As you read through the New Testament, you see that there are Jews and there are Gentiles who believe in him. There are the blind and the lame and the sick believe in him. Fishermen and tax collectors believe in him. Businesswomen and slave girls believe in him. Politicians and jailers believe in him. People from all over the world, people speaking all manner of languages, from all sorts of backgrounds, believe in him. And today, this very morning, even in this church building, this, this little church building here in Cholton, all manner of people believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got landscape architects and bookkeepers and plumbers who believe in him. We've got housewives and NHS workers and professional sportsmen who believe in him. We've got compliance officers and A-level students and cake makers who believe in him. Our oldest church member is in her 80s. Our youngest church member is in his teens. And they all believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the nations that are represented here in this church are endless. Ecuador, Trinidad, Jamaica, Romania... South Africa, Cameroon, Malaysia, New Zealand, the Cook Islands, to name but a few. Yet there is one thing that unites us all. Despite our different ages, despite our different backgrounds, despite our different nationalities, this one thing is true of all the members of this church. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is the resurrection and the life. Jesus says, everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. So don't leave this church this morning thinking, well, it's not for me. It's not for the likes of me. Don't leave this church this morning thinking, well, I'm not really the type of person that could ever believe in Jesus because there is no sort and there is no type. There is no kind of person the only distinction, really, is those who believe and those who don't. That's the only difference. But for everyone who does believe, there is the sure and certain hope of the life that is to come. That's what Jesus said to his dear friend Martha. Here in John chapter 11, verse 25 and verse 26, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me though he die yet shall he live and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die that's a wonderful statement but that's not all Jesus says that's not how Jesus ends he ends by asking Martha a question right there at the end of verse 26 just look at the end of verse 26. The closing words of verse 26, Jesus says, Do you believe this? Do you believe this? And that's the critical question this Easter Sunday morning. Do you believe this? That's the very personal question that Jesus asks Martha and that Jesus, through the pages of the Bible, asks you this morning. Do you believe this? If you do, if you do believe this, then Jesus says everyone who does believe has eternal life. But if you don't, if you don't believe this, if you walk out of this church building this morning not believing, well then there is no hope. You have no hope of the resurrection. No hope of life in heaven for all eternity after death. 
no hope of anything that lies beyond the grave. But praise be to God, you don't have to walk away without any hope. There is hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but your hope has to be in Jesus and it has to be through faith. And if it is, if your hope is in Jesus and it is through faith, then it is for anyone, it is for everyone who believes. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Let's pray. Lord God and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the resurrection of your Son, our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that he had victory over the grave and over the curse of death, and that we who believe in him, though we die, yet shall we live. We pray, Lord God, that everyone in church this morning will come to faith in these wonderful things, and that our faith might be in your Son, our wonderful Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask that you will bless all of us this Easter Sunday morning and that your name would be honoured and glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.